Let me tell you this. If you want to hear your voice floating in the middle of a beautiful tapestry of frequencies, you're going to need a pop group. I got this tune in my head, but it occurred to me that it wasn't a Bill Sebastian tune. I couldn't imagine the band singing it. I could hear female voices. It's clear that I was getting quite a few ideas for a so called girl group song. The project that Stuart Murdoch's been now working on is thinking that he was set to, to music that almost like form a, a girl band around it. Ah, that's a good question. The whole girl group project, how is it coming along? Stevie and I have been talking about films for quite a while and, and the possibility of doing a film with Belle and Sebastian or just simply doing a film. For at least the past four or five years I've entertained the notion that I might at some point make a, a film but never had the real wherewithal to, to go ahead and do it. All the time when I was touring with Belle and Sebastian and working with Belle and Sebastian I was putting songs aside that were for certain characters. All these songs were sung by two, maybe three characters and that why don't I string them together to form uh, the backbone of a musical narrative. The name of it is, fittingly enough, is the same name as the first song that came along for the girl group thing, which started it all off maybe about three or four years ago, and it's called God Help the Girl. Internet surfing. There was a an obscure website. Stuart was looking for singers to sing the songs that he'd written for God Help the Girl. There was a very subtle, vague reference that maybe it would have something to do with a movie at some point. As a fan of the band, I just uh, said movie. My, my ears perked up. Brian Mandel is a Hollywood producer. That's how I like to introduce him. This is Barry Mendel, he's a Hollywood producer. He's from Hollywood. I'm in love with the city, I'm in love with the boy. Gotta put it on record, gotta write At some point it was entirely obvious to me that if I was going to make a film, then I needed to record the music beforehand. It just so happens that we recorded the music and it was four years before we ended up you know, making the film. When Bell and Sebastian finally finished their tour of duty, I was free for the first time in 10 years proper, and I gave myself the task of trying to write the script. The process that we had working together on the script was, uh, it was helpful and fun, but at times it was very frustrating to him. You know, he would like finish a draft of the script and say, okay, let's go make the movie. And then I would say, oh, you know, I think we're, we're you know, within four years of being able to, to to call the script a first draft or something, you know, I would say something super obnoxious like that. We just talked about it the best we could to Film 4 and BBC and BFI, and none of them really liked the movie. I don't think we would be able to fully invest up front as we are only just looking into how our director's strands might work, so they haven't got their shit together yet. We felt that we needed to have something going for us. Kickstarter was born in desperation, and, and we also made this ridiculous promise, which was, if we're able to raise $100,000, we'll make this film, for sure, that costs almost $2 million to make. And that makes no sense. Economically, it was an irresponsible statement. It was a kind of no-turning-back thing. We're publicly saying we're going to make the movie, if you come through. Okay, so what just happened? <laughs> what just happened? Kickstarter went to 100000 They came through and they went way past $100,000. It was an incredible outpouring of support for the movie. And that coincided with a really nice rewrite that Stuart did on the script. And so the next time we went 
down to London, those two things led to a UK distributor really getting behind the movie in a great way. And, you know, the dominoes just started to fall 